Ja. On the way down the steps, Lance Armstrong asked me whether all my press conferences were so well attended. And I said, only the ones about balancing the budget. That's when we get this kind of a crowd. I give you now a biking icon, Lance Armstrong. Well, thank you very much. I, uh, the wonderful world of Twitter, I guess. Uh, it's, it's, it's great to be with you all. You know, one of the most common questions I get is, what do you think about when you're on your bike for five or six hours a day? And of course, if you're sitting there by yourself for five or six, imagine sitting in a chair all alone for five or six hours. What you would think about, what would go through your mind, your family, your friends, what you're gonna have for lunch, et cetera, et cetera. But one day I was out spending part of the year in Aspen and, and out on a long bike ride. I had just broken my collarbone. I was deciding whether or not I was gonna do the Tour of Italy, but I'm doing this long bike ride over there and I thought, you know, We've got such a great history of cycling in America, cycling in Colorado. We have a current crop of, of professional racers that are at the top of their sport. We have a younger generation coming through. We have a fantastic history of, of great professional cyclists. Why is there not, like there was in the old days, a professional stage race in this state? So I thought about it some more, and then I, I did a couple more long rides and continued to think about it. Then I came home, and as the governor said, I just, I thought, well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call the governor. And people thought, well, you're going to call the governor? The first person you're going to call is the governor? I said, yes, I'm going to call the governor. So I called Governor Ritter and I said, listen, I don't know if you know anything about cycling. And he told me the story about standing on the roadside at the Morgul Bismarck, watching the Coors Classic go by. I thought, okay, this guy, I called the right guy. And as we started to think about this, he said, well, I'm going to be in Aspen in a few weeks. I'll come have lunch. We sat down with a group of people. And to think, it, it, it really feels like it was yesterday, to think that we've gone from that initial phone call to that lunch, to standing here today with thousands of people that care about cycling from a professional standpoint, but more importantly from a recreational standpoint and a health and fitness and wellness standpoint, it's truly amazing. Um, I think that really this is the birth of an event, but in a lot of ways it's the rebirth of an old, traditional, historic event that we all came to know and love a long, long time ago, but now standing here with just to give you a perfect example, we, we have the defending champion of the Coors Classic here in Davis Finney. But I, I've told him that comebacks are a lot harder than people think. <laughs> he has said, okay, but I have a son in Taylor Finney who will be there. And this will be, this will be the type, one of your own, one of your very own. The defending champion. Davis Finney, ladies and gentlemen. How do you do? We won't talk about that. You know, when Davis raced, he won so many prizes and premiums, they, they nicknamed him the cash register. And so I've had this, we've had this whole discussion, with, you know, nobody really has cash registers anymore, so Taylor, I think, now is sort of like, you know, PayPal or some sort of direct pay. But that's what, I mean, the point is that this race is really about the future generation of cycling in America and really the future generation of, of cyclists all around the world. Back in the day, you know, European cyclists, international cyclists, they didn't want to come to the United States and race. It was a long trip. It was a hassle. It didn't mean anything to their sponsors. That's not the case today. If you look at the Tour of California, you look at this event, I can tell you that the European riders, the best European riders, will be lined up to come to this event. They have tremendous support from the American bicycle industry. Uh, they want to come to America. They know the fans love and respect them. They know that the hotels are nice. Uh, the, we laugh, but you should see the places they put us in in Europe. Don't tell them. Uh, but anyhow, uh, this is a great day. It's a great day for, uh, for the sport. It's a great day for, uh, for the young generation. It's a great day for, for our team, Team Radio Shack, but, but it's also a great day for all the other American professional teams. And uh, what started out as a wacky idea is a reality, and it wouldn't be reality without Quiznos. Um, you know, they saw this idea, they saw the buzz, and they contacted us and said, you know, this is, this is an amazing opportunity, not just for a professional event, but to tell the story 
of health and fitness and wellness and cycling, getting out in your community, enjoying. Look, look at these days. I, I, ju I just came from Austin. I see the Longhorn flag over there. I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that, yes, I'm a Texan. But it, it is 104, 104 in Austin. And here, look, at we're in this weather. Why wouldn't you be out on a bike? So. Uh, Thank you all for being here. This is, uh, it, this is the start of something special. And you're here today, but, but in August of 2011, you'll be on the roadside, you'll be painting the roads and supporting amazing athletes, what I consider to be the best athletes in the world, bar none. So thank you all. I look forward to the ride this afternoon. I'm gonna, this is not what I'm wearing for the ride. Uh, I'm wearing the most controversial jersey in cycling right now uh, for the ride. But, Again, thank you. Thank you to Quiznos. Ellen, thank you very much. Uh, awesome. Thanks for being here. Hey, it's right there on front. <laughs> 